Hey there, and welcome to The Knit Show. I'm Vicki Howell. Today, we are gonna be talking about modern day knitting. So everything that makes that old school craft we all love feel new. We're gonna start off the day with Pom Pom Quarterly's Megan Fernandez. Then we'll head to Columbus, Ohio, where I give you an insider's peek in our industry market, TNNA. After that, we're gonna meet up with Webb's co-owner, Kathy Elkins. She's gonna talk about trends that she sees from her customers every day that walk in and out. She's also gonna show how to make this really cool shawl. And then I'm going to wrap it up by giving you the wrap on all different types of needles. But first, we are going to meet today's Knit Hive. Hello, ladies. Welcome. Hi, hi. Welcome. Kristen, you, you took a little trip to be here. I I've did. Heard. I Where, did. Where'd um, you come from? So um, I own a yarn store in St. Petersburg, Florida, and we decided to come uh, hang out with you today. What, well, what's the name? Why, uh, where can people in Florida find you? Well, you know, what do you call your big pile of yarn at home? Stash. Stash. A place for yarn. That's the name of our shop. That's a great name. Thanks. Yeah, we Oh, like that's it. wonderful. Well, what made you want to fly all the way down here? Well, when you did your Kickstarter campaign, that was one of the perks, and we that was what we donated to. So. Well, I'm so thrilled. Yeah. Thank you. I love that you also came and you brought the knitwear. You've got little yeah. felted yeah. earrings. Felt and, and my necklace is a sheep. Oh, so cute. So as a yarn store owner, what are you seeing? What do people most come in and ask? What's your most requested yarn or project or anything, really? Uh, so right now, because we do get a lot of yarn tourists, um, they always want something that they can't get at home. So they come in and they say, what do you have that's local? And we're fortunate to have a local dyer in Tampa, which is about half an hour from us. And so that yarn flies off the shelf. And then we also just started carrying a um, all Florida grown and milled alpaca. Oh, I love so, that. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you for being yeah. here. Thanks for having me. Susan, you're also a yarn store owner. We've got yarn store owners in the house today. Yes, I am. Yarnorama in Page, Texas, um, about 40 miles east of Austin. Um, we are known as the playground for the fiber obsessed. Lovely. And like Kristen, we also have our own line of um, hand-dyed fibers. Oh, is this and, it? Yes. Oh, let's take a look at it. This is it. And, um, oh, it's lovely. Uh, because of where we're located, we are a destination shop, and so people come in the same and want to know what we have that's local, that's special yeah. to our area. And so it's really awesome to be able to have something that we've created ourselves for people. Yeah, you know, and then, you know, speaking of trends, this really is a trend for yarn stores right now. There's been, you know, with changing technologies, we all in the industry have to figure out where our place is. And yarn stores have felt a little bit of the rub from there being e-commerce sites and, so, and Etsy stores in so many different ways. That's really wonderful, but we all have to be creative. So a lot of yarn store owners, as you ladies have, have talked about, have, have really felt like either private label stuff where you, you make it yourself or in bringing in local stuff is really the way to make your shop special. Um, and I know that whenever I go to a yarn store I, and I'm traveling, I go straight to see what they have that's there. This is lovely. It's got cashmere and silk and merino. Yeah, yep. lovely. And it's branded under Fiber Obsessions. Great. I love it. Pretty. So hello. Hi. Our crochet is here. <laughs> How long have you been crocheting? Uh, I've been crocheting uh, since I was five years old, so over 20 years now. Um, yeah, my mom taught me she had a lot of patience then that she doesn't have now. I'm really <laughs> impressed that at five, and by the way, hello, Hope, I didn't even say your <laughs> name, um, that at five you had the dexterity. I have an eight-year-old daughter, and she mm -hmm. she's also not into it, to be honest with you. But I, it, it's really impressive. I learned when I was eight from my mom, too. Mm -hmm. We watched Bionic Woman and MASH and Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. and I still have those granny square blanket, like doll blankets. Mm -hmm. And so crochet really always will have like a, that special place in my heart because I actually kind of hated knitting when I was little. Ironic. <laughs> um, <laughs> It wasn't until I was older. So, but crochet is just one of those things that um, will always be special to me. So I'm glad that you're here yeah. representing it. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking I'm going to go meet the first guest. Yeah. Why don't you guys hang out, make yourself okay. at home, and uh, we'll meet up later. All okay. Right. Awesome. All right. All right. I'm going to go meet our first guest. My first guest is co-founder of one of my favorite magazines, Pom Pom Quarterly, my friend Megan Fernandez. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. We wanted you to be on this. You were one of the first name that came to our mind when we decided we wanted to do a Modern Trends uh, episode because Pom Pom Magazine is so fresh and so beautiful. And I would love if from a publisher and an editor's perspective, if you would just talk to us a little bit about different shapes and styles that feel very now. Yeah, so um, we do a lot of garments. 
And at Pom Pom, our favorite is like kind of a cropped silhouette. I know longer styles have been in, in fashion recently. Because but, they cover some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you got a high-waisted skirt or something like that. Yeah. Um, so we always really are into that. But the great thing about knitting is that you can lengthen things or whatever. Sure, um, sure. According to what you like. Um, we also really like different kinds of shaping, different techniques for creating different shapes. Um, so for example, short rows, sure. um, which have been really popular in shawls and things like that recently, but um, are really starting to be kind of the standard in garment making. So um, yeah, whenever there's like kind of a clever technique for constructing a garment, we're really into that. Because it feels fresh or whatever. So just, yeah. just give, in case somebody doesn't know, give a really quick description of what a short row is. Well, it's like a wedge of fabric that's created by just knitting a shorter row. Um, yeah, because yeah, it can seem really intimidating sometimes, short rows. But, um, and I did not do well in geometry or anything like that when I was in high school. But um, once you've done it once, it kind of makes sense. But it creates a wedge of fabric so that you get like a shape like this, um, so that you don't have to do like lots of casting off and decreasing and stuff like that. You could just have your stitches on your needles and, and look seamless and yeah, beautiful. Exactly. So, so the shoulder has this particular garment has mm -hmm. um, some shoulder shaping through that. Yeah, and you get this really cool detail here because there's short rows that are made along here. Um, and I love these shoulders. I think they're super cool. It's so cool. Yeah. I also love um, the stripe detailing. Right, I love stripes anyway. Yeah. These are such my color jeans. Well, I was going to say the pink okay. and gold. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, but also the teal. Yeah, that's yeah. a really great and really smart. What I love is that the garment is still simple. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that it has to be easy. You know, it's got some, not that short rows are harder, but it steps it up. It steps up your It yourself. makes your knitting interesting. It does. For it you, does absolutely. For you to actually what about this other sweater that is right next oh, to you? Oh, it's so cool. Um, yeah, so the short rows are here. So this is your like wedge of fabric here. And um, so that makes it seamless, of course. And it's um, just a really great way instead of doing like raglan increases or a set in sleeve or so something. So the whole, was this all done in one piece? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just gorgeous. It really is. Yeah. And it gives you such a really cool sort of graphic effect. It, it does. kind of fools the eye. Yeah. Also in, right, the, the high contrast pattern on pattern. Yeah. Yeah. No, this whole issue, these are both from our autumn issue. It's all about pattern. Um, are jewel tones back too? Well, we think did so. Did they ever leave? I mean, did they ever leave? <laughs> yeah. But we go, there was a while where it was like wintry white, everything. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. We, I know that there's definitely a trend for like uh, the capsule wardrobe that's like very clean mm. and um, beiges and denim and stuff, but we love color and we think, you know, you can have a capsule. And knitters love color because yeah. it gets it, boring yeah, to, to exactly. not know what color. Yeah. Okay, so this one, this one's a little more subtle, but talk to me about it. Yeah, so this one really simply just the shoulder shaping is done with short rows. So instead of the traditional like casting off and decreasing thing, it's just really, really simple. And um, yeah, you, can, you can't even see it. You can't see it, which is the point, clever right? Short so rows it's so are. pretty yeah. and clean and really um, it looks professional. Yeah. Which is a big way to step up your knitting schools. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on just that technique, the short row shaping, but on another trend, <laughs> Ankle socks, yeah. so cute, so cute. Yeah. So talk to me about this project. So this is a really great sort of like gateway drug into the short row thing. Um, and that's doing your heel with short rows. Mm -hmm. And so if you're scared of short rows uh, in a garment, this is a really good way to just test it out and see how actually simple it is before you commit yeah. to a whole garment. Before you make a life commitment to a big garment, yeah. you can just dive right in for yeah. this. So the entire pattern for this will be on the knitshow.com, but we're really gonna just focus on this shaping. Well, two things. One, these socks are also made from the toe up, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna focus on that and the short row shaping. Everything else you're gonna totally get by just looking at the pattern and you know where to find that. Why don't we get started? Great. All right. So first, I'm going to show you how you do the cast-on for toe-up socks. And um, it's called Judy's Magic Cast-On. And um, it is kind of magic. Um, and so I, I do things Magic Loop. And these um, socks are written for Magic Loop. Um, and if you haven't tried that yet, again, it's, it's really easy once you, once you get into it. But I will sort of show that as well. So first thing you want to do is do a slip knot. And that on one of your needles. And so what's going to happen is you're going to cast on 
22 stitches in total. And does it matter what cast on method? Or that's part of this, this magic? Is, this okay. is part of the magic, yeah. So kind of like you're doing a long tail cast on, but you have both needles parallel to each other here. And so you're going to, like a long tail cast on, if you're familiar with that, you're going to loop that around on that needle. We'll call this needle one. And then loop around there on needle two. And then just with your yarn around your thumb like that. So you're alternating. Alternating. That is magical. Yeah. Wait till you see what happens next. So that's four on each needle. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Oops, now I'm counting wrong now. Let's just double check. Two, four, six, eight. And the last ones, 11. So we've got our stitches parallel to each other like this. And this is going to be our toe. So there's no Kitchener stitch. Glorious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Glorious. Yeah, and that was super quick. Um, much faster than doing Kitchener stitch, I think, once you get the hang of it. OK. So now, in order to start knitting, we've got our working yarn here. And we're going to pull out this needle. So you get these two kind of like butterfly wings going on here. And then you can just start knitting like so. And so across the first needle, you're just going to work the stitches as you normally would. And it doesn't matter if you're an English or a continental knitter. It doesn't matter. You do you. Yep, exactly. So across. And maybe you want to cast them on looser than I just did. Yeah. <laughs> um, What's your thing? Yeah, right. But uh, that's a good reminder. The first row of any project anywhere is always more persnickety than, any, exactly. than the exactly. rest of the rows. Exactly. So all these stitches are going to end up over here on the right. Okay, and so that's one side of our sock. And then turn it around, and then you go and do the second side. Now, for the, the second needle, you want to make sure that you're knitting through the back loop okay. of those stitches. Because you're working... Because the cast on twists. That because first. the cast on twists, okay. Yeah, so okay. you would just knit through the back loop on that second okay. set of needles. Okay, so now that you've done that, you're going to go ahead and follow the pattern, which yep. again is on the knitshow.com, and you're going to work. It's very, you know, it's straight knitting. There's some increases. Yep, whatever. really simple increases. Foot. Let's let's get into the good stuff. Okay, the, so the now short we're going to do some short rows. Okay. So we've created a gusset here with some increases. Again, just to knit front and back, really super, super simple. So now here's where the short rows happen. And so what we're going to do is I have knit across only part of the row. So that's the beginning of our short mm -hmm. rows. Um, and I'm going to do what's called a wrap and turn with this next stitch. And what that means is that I'm going to kind of capture that stitch so that when I turn and go back in the other direction, there's not a huge hole in right. your knitting. So really simple. On the right side of your knitting when you're doing this, you bring your yarn to the front, you slip that stitch over to your right needle, then you take your yarn to the back so that it's wrapped, pass it back to your left needle, and then you turn your work. So that's a wrap and turn. And you'll notice that she left a bunch of stitches undone because she's only working a short portion of the row. Exactly. Okay. And so now I would go back, and I would only go like 20 stitches back, um, so that we're just working the middle of that heel so that you just get that wedge just on those stitches. So you're just creating a little pocket of fabric there um, so that your heel can fit in. So you would wrap and turn on that side as well. Yep, and I'll just quickly show you how you would do that on the purl side. So you would bring the yarn to the back, 
pass your stitch from the left needle to the right, bring your yarn to the front, and then pass it back. So it's got a little scarf on. And then you would turn. And then you just keep doing that just back continue. and forth. Just like one stitch less each time. And um, that creates your little pocket of fabric. Perfect. And then what do we do about those wraps after that? Exactly. So in order to make it so that it's really nice and invisible, um, here I've created that pocket. It's kind of hard to see right now, but um, it's right there. Um, I've knit across the row, and I'm about to come to some wraps. And so what you do is you pick up that, that wrap from front to back and pop it on the needle and then just knit those two strands together. And it should disappear. Let's see it one more time. Yep. So you pick up the wrap. So you pick wrap. up the wrap from front to back. Oops. Yep. And knit those two strands together. And that makes it pretty invisible. I've actually left the wraps before because I sometimes like as a detail yeah, just having the bumps, yes. but you have options that way for sure. Exactly. And that's all there is to it. People think it's really super difficult to short yeah. row, but it's one of those things that are, is going to free you up skill-wise and really open a bunch of doors. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, I'm a big fan. I love everything you do, and I'm really excited for people to make these socks. Please make sure that you download the pattern at thenitshow.com, and when you make them, tag Megan at Pom Pom Quarterly? Pom Pom Mag. At Pom Pom Mag, and make sure to, of course, tag at The Knit Show. Up next, we are going to take you for an insider's peek at our industry market, TNNA. <laughs> Hey there, I am at the Convention Center in Columbus, Ohio for the annual summer show for TNNA. For those of you who may not know, this is actually the place where all of your local yarn store owners go to see the latest trends for yarn and bags and tools and all the great stuff that you make with. Normally, the public is not allowed to be inside the show, but we're giving you an insider sneak peek. We're gonna start by seeing all the new products, and then I'm gonna take you to the show floor so you can really see the goods. Let's check it out. Well, uh, TNNA, the National Legal Arts Association, is really about uh, providing an opportunity for trade to happen between uh, manufacturers, wholesalers, uh, and retailers. So, a chance for them to see new products, uh, older products, uh, different uh, new vendors, uh, and see what's new in the industry, uh, and bring that back to their stores and sell it to, the, to their customers and consumers at large. So uh, it's good for you know, brick and mortar shops as well as online shops and, and uh, all, all ways in which we buy things uh, in this day and age. Courtney Kelly, she is actually the chairperson of the Yarn Group. First of all, hello. Hi, how are you? I am great, and I'm really happy that to be able to talk to you about the Yarn Group because I don't think that it's really something that the sort of general community knows about. So if you yeah. kind of give us the scoop, I would love that. We're kind of like the industry behind the scenes uh, yarn world is sort of how I think of it. Um, basically, we're under the TNNA umbrella. TNNA, of course, is composed of, you know, yarn companies, needlepoint companies, cross-stitch, embroidery, I mean, it's everything. And we're sort of like the yarn affinity group within mm. TNNA. So if your company has something to do with yarn, whether you're a wholesaler or a yarn shop or a designer, a tech editor, yarn group is sort of a way for you to get your voice heard within 
TNNA, and it's my job on the TNNA board to make sure that I bring the things that are important to yarn people to the discussion. back in the studio to talk more trends. And with me now is Kathy Elkins, who is the co-owner of Webb's America's Yarn Store, and also my friend and collaborator on many projects. Yes. Kathy Elkins, so good to see you. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. My first time in Austin. Well, welcome, thank welcome, you. welcome. I, um, the reason I really wanted you on the show, other than you know that I adore you, is because you, are, you run such a successful yarn store that you see a lot of people coming in and out. You also have your own yarn lines, so you, from both perspectives, see the trends um, abroad and right where we are at home. And I was wondering if you would talk a little bit about what you're seeing, what your customers are really into right now. Sure. You know. I, I think there's, it really runs a gamut, but if we were going to hone in on a couple of things, um, certainly um, color work in and to itself isn't as popular in my shop as it has been previously, but the way I'm seeing color used is in gradients and in striping and using accents and pops of color. That is tremendously popular, and I'm not just seeing it in my shop, but, you know, I pay attention to what other shops are doing as well and on their email lists, and, you know, and it's very, very prevalent, and it's, it's something that the knitters... Um, are, are definitely focused on right now. It's keeping it simple and letting the yarn do a lot of the work, Absolutely. the dye techniques, which Absolutely. we love. And I think that that's indicative of sort of where we are today in, as a society. Everybody's really busy, everybody's running crazy, and they want to have a project that's interesting and fun and has a beautiful end result, but they don't want to jump through rings of fire to get there. Absolutely, you are, you are preaching to the choir. <laughs> Accessibility is so important, and none of us needs like another thing that we don't finish, right? right. We want something that we can actually like accomplish and put something beautiful out in the world. And if it can be a cool accessory like what we're going to make today, even yeah, better. Yeah, and the accessory piece of it is really is really interesting too, Vicki, because you don't have to worry about seaming and sizing. And, you know, I know we all do our gauge swatches, but in the off chance that you didn't, you're not going to get yourself into as much trouble as if you did that when you were trying to do a sweater. Okay, well, talk to me about this project that we're working on today. Oh, this project is near and dear to me. I love this. It's a triangle shawl knit from end to end. Mm -hmm. um, it's done uh, using Valley Yarns Northfield, which is one of my yarns, um, in two commercially dyed colorways. And then the trim, this beautiful ruffle, um, is the same yarn, but it's hand dyed locally um, by one of my staff members. Oh, wow, that's lovely. So again, we've been talking about the, that in the show, like bringing in, as a yarn store owner, bringing in something that little bit of special. And when you do that, it brings a little bit of special to your project. You've also brought some other colors. So if blue, I mean, you know I love this color, but if blue isn't your gig, they can choose from any pop. Right, and, and even if you don't want to go with the hand dyed, if, the, if these poppy colors are a little bit too much for somebody, there's some other great colorways in the commercially dyed line that you could absolutely have the same effect with. Yeah, so why don't we um, get started on making this project? This project, as you said, is worked from tip to tip. And so that means it starts really tiny and ends really tiny. So let's let's start with the increases that make it less tiny. Absolutely, you cast on three stitches and it's a four row repeat of three knit rows and then your increase row. And so I've done a little bit of it here, Vicki, just so folks can see, I didn't want to start way down low, but I'm ready now to do my increase. And we're increasing only on one side. So you'll have a straight edge and a, um, a pointed edge as this continues to grow. So to do the increase, you just wrap your yarn and knit as you normally would in the front and then knit into the back of the stitch, pull it through, and voila, you have two stitches. It's one of my favorite increases. Um, it's very, very simple to do. It has a nice look, and, it, and even though it's a little bit uh, messy here on the edges, when we pick up a knit for the ruffle, that'll all disappear into nowhere. It's called a KFB or a knit right. front and back, back, and that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, so you've worked up another piece for us, and it looks like it's time 
So they can really see, oops, the other side, how this comes together. You can see the shape forming. Let's just show them really quickly. Yep. You can see that this is the wrong side, yep. but you can see how it's really starting to form, getting wider and wider and wider as you increase. So let's talk changing colors. Okay, so there is a schematic for the way the striping in this particular piece um, is done. You can follow it one for one, or you can do your own thing, but the way we did it is we started a big block of the light color, starting to flow into the contrasting color, and then when you finish at the end, it's all in the contrasting color. So you've sort of got gradient and striping happening all at the same time. Okay, well let's just show them really quick how you would join a color. Absolutely, absolutely. And what I like to do is I like to hold the two strands together sort of behind and pick up my other needle. Okay, hold it behind and wrap and pull it through and then just keep going. And then it's joined. Then it's joined and then you can just keep going along. But I like to hold those tails behind so that they don't get in your way um, when you're going along. Perfect, okay, so that's joined. You continue as the pattern is called for and that pattern will of course be available on the nitshow.com. Okay, so now let's talk decreases. You've worked a swatch, this is not the whole shawl, it's too hard to see on camera. So this is the coming back down. To We're coming back down. We have a whole lot of shawl back here behind right. us in, in reality. So here you're just going to do the decrease. And again, it's um, just like it was on the increase. You're knitting three rows and then you do a decrease, decrease, decrease row um, on the edge. And the decrease for this is you're going to knit a stitch as you normally would. Then you're going to slip. And you're going to slip a stitch. Whoops. There we go. Slip the stitch and then you're going to knit And then you're going to just slip that stitch back over. Oh, there you go, just like that. And now you've decreased, and then you continue a slip, on slip knit. Yeah. A slip, slip knit. And that creates that left slanting. Exactly, so and that you, brings you down. you do need to use that decrease yes. in case people want to go rogue and, and use another one. Oh, yeah, no, 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 okay. none of that. So perfect, so you would continue as the pattern calls for. And I just want to show them really quickly. Um, Let's talk edging and picking up stitches. Right, so um, this has already been started as you can see, but this is just a, a pick up or pick up and knit as however you term it. And it's really simple. Sometimes picking up stitches is not exactly a fine art. You kind of have to fiddle with the, the formula a little bit to know how many you should pick up to make it look appropriate. With this project, because of its simplicity, you in its garter stitch, you just have to pick up in each and every valley. So it makes it, makes it very easy. And the valley is? In between right. the two rows in of between, buttons. Right, in between the two ridges. So you just put your needle in, you wrap your yarn around, whoops, wrap your yarn around, pull it through, and you've got your stitch. And then you go on, and if you just pinch and pull, you'll be able to see your valleys a little bit easier, and you wrap it, and you pull it through. And you just keep going like that until you reach the end. Yeah, and then from there, she's worked this is the ruffle portion. Um, and so she's worked, you can see that pop of color really coming out. Right. Um, the increase that you did were just, that you did is exactly like the increase that you showed earlier. Right. right, so what happened is we pick up the whole row and then when we come back, we're gonna do that same increase in every single stitch. So you're gonna double the number of stitches that you have and then from there you just knit, 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 and it creates this beautiful ruffle effect. Yeah, it creates the gap, uh, or excuse me, the gathering effect. And ruffles are actually really on trend right now too, so. Neutrals, pop of color, ruffles, you've kind of I've covered it, it all. all. Thank you so much, friend. I really appreciate you being here. Thank this you, This is Vicky. such a great project. Make sure that you go to thenitshow.com to download this pattern and get more scoop on Kathy's yarns and all that good stuff. Up next, though, I am going to take you through a little tour of kind of today's needles and so you know what needle to use when. <laughs> Although knitting needles really have always just been two sticks or maybe one cord and two sticks, there have been a, a few developments within the knitting world. It might be materials, it might be like a tiny different shape, but I thought it would be really fun to go through the basics of the different types of needles and then later I will talk about materials. Okay, so first up, types. First, everybody starts on straights. Basic, really easy, you can knit flat pieces, you knit back and forth. It's really kind of the go-to beginner basic needle. Great, the only sort of downfall to them is that it's kind of limiting on how wide of piece that you um, can use and also how heavy a piece because it can be hard on your wrists. That's where circulars come in. Circulars have two tips and then a cord and the cord is all, can be all different lengths. So you can do one of two things with circulars. 
you can knit in the round with them, with the circumference of the cord. Or what I like to do is I actually do almost all of my flat knitting on circulars. I still knit back and forth as if they were regular needles, but all the weight is held on my lap where the cord is rather than hurting my wrist. It's just a little tip and it saves things. Okay, the next option is our double pointed needles. Double points can be used with either four or five at a time or really up to any number that you'd like. They're really good also for knitting in the round, great for smaller projects, mittens, socks, the top of hats as you decrease. Anytime you need to get smaller, you wanna move over to DPNs. All right, now, if you're upping your game and you wanna work with circulars, that's when you invest in an adjustable set. So this set is gorgeous. Um, it's all sleek and black, which really um, is just a plus. But what's cool about it is that it has all these different cords and then different needles, and they're adjustable, so all you have to do is Pick your size, and then you just screw on your needle. And so you can change it regardless of what type or what size you need, or if you need to change the length as your project grows, you've got it with you. I travel with this adjustable set because then no matter what my knitting whim is, I have the right supplies. Okay, so those are the, the basic different types of needles. Now let's talk materials. I'm gonna move these out of the way. All right, first up, aluminum. Everybody has worked with aluminum at one point in their life. Your grandmother probably worked with them. You probably worked with them um, when you were a kid. Now they're a little bit more sleeker. These are called zings and they're really lightweight and they have a much pointier tip, which is something that wasn't really a thing when aluminum's first started. So this is kind of a go-to easy metal to work with. Next up is wood. Now I've got these big mamma jammas, but you can get them in any, you know, any different size. Wood is heavier, but still great, especially when you get bigger, because metal this big would be crazy time. So this is actually like a birch wood. Really, anytime you use wood, it warms in the hands, and that's always an option. And this is a basic, so it's probably a little bit more affordable. So these two are really sort of your affordable options. If you still want wood, consider going this route. So these are gorgeous. These are colorful and beautiful. Um, these are actually called Dreams. And um, they are by Knitter's Pride and Knit Pro. All of this stuff is, depending on where you are, either UK or US. And these have the wood. They're slick. So that means that normally I wouldn't recommend using wood needles if you were using a cotton, but these are such a slick, uh, have such a slick finish. You're good. They also have the metal tips. So they work for lace knitting, which is great, or any time that you're working with a thinner yarn that you really need to get in there with the tips. So these are really beautiful, um, a beautiful option. They also look great kind of in a vase because they come in different colors depending on what size they are. Their aluminum needles also color coded, which is super handy because you don't ever have to, I don't know about you, but I'm always like trying to find the number or whatever and you just grab a color. These, these are just fun. So another type is plastic. A lot of different brands make different type of plastic. I have not seen the marble ones like this before. These are called marbles, um, and I just think they're the coolest. They're lightweight, they're fun to work with, and they're really eye-catching. So again, these would look great in a vase, but also um, really just kind of light and airy. All right, these last ones I'm gonna show you. These, my friends, these are the Cadillacs. They're sleek. They're fast, they've got tip point, uh, really pointy tips. They're called carbons. This is going to make your knitting go faster because your yarn's just gonna glide off. They've got the pointy tips, so again, great for lace. And really, if you are serious about your knitting and ready to buckle in, this is a set that you'll have for the rest of your life. All right, so now you've seen all the basic and beautiful types of knitting, needles, shapes, sizes, and materials. <laughs> All right, that does it for us today. Thank you so much for tuning in at home. Thank you to our Hivesters for being Thank here. You. Make sure that you tune in to the next episode where we focus on the big knits trend. We will have Loopy Mangos, Wei Zhang Kim, and also my friend Michelle Muska from Boy Simplicity. Until next time, breathe in, knit out. <laughs>